Hello again, welcome back everyone. Looker Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another Spirit Review video. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the Copper and Kings American Made Brandy from the Butchertown Distillery there in Louisville, Kentucky. Now this distillery is fairly new. They only have a, about three to four bottlings as of today. Uh, but they've been doing a really, really good job at what they're doing. Now American Made Brandy isn't exactly huge, all right? Uh, there's only a handful of distilleries that are doing it right now. I think Laird's does an apple brandy. Charbet does a brandy. They did a phenomenal 27-year-old while well back. Uh, Jermaine Robin has been doing it for decades. So, you know, we have our fair share of brandy uh, distillers. Uh, but this is the first one that has really kind of hit a niche that I think is really good because bourbon is so big right now. Everybody seems to really enjoy bourbon. And... This being right in the middle of Kentucky, they are taking some of the best qualities of a bourbon, uh, or at least the bourbon maturation. They're doing a, a charred American white oak barrel and some ex-bourbon barrels, and they're maturing their brandies in it. Now, the thing to note about them is that not all of this is their own made distillate, okay? They are sourcing some brandies because they're a very new company. They knew they can't just start distilling grapes and create an unaged product and we'll just bottle that and it's going to sell like hotcakes. They knew that's not going to happen. So they did have to source some pot distilled brandy. Now, when they did that, they did make sure it is unchill filtered, non-colored, you know, there's nothing, no artificial, you know, flavorings going into it or anything crazy like that. So it's very, very pure. It's very, very well-made distillate. Now, they take this brandy that's aged anywhere from 4 to 13 years of age. Uh, they bring it back to Louisville where they put it in those American-made uh, charred American oak white barrels. And they let it do a little additional maturation, getting some of those flavors. That, and it, especially when it's ex-bourbon barrels, you're going to pull some of that bourbon out and that's what they're doing. So in this brandy, you will get a sense of bourbon and a sense of really good brandy. It's kind of unique, but it really works, all right? So let's go ahead and get to the, well, let's talk real quick about their bottlings. Uh, when they first came out, they did a immature, unaged brandy. It was clear, 90 proof, 30, $35. Then they did a, a craft American brandy, and that one was 90 proof as well, 30, $35, but that had some maturation on it, had a little bit of color in there. Then they did the Butchertown release. Now the Butchertown is very similar to what we're looking at here. The Butchertown release is a batch uh, of barrels that go into their blend. It is bottled at 120 proof. So that's very high ABV when you consider Cognacs and Armagnacs. They're very, very rarely bottled at cast strength. Um, but again, 120 proof, that doesn't mean it's cast strength because they're not all just dumping out all those barrels and they magically hit the 120 number. So I'm sure they're adding some water to bring it right to 120, but probably not a lot. Now this happens to be a single barrel bottling. And it was bottled and hand selected by Benny's out of Chicago. So if you're up there, you can get your hands on this, no big deal. Uh, but if you can't, don't worry about it because this isn't that far off from the Butchertown release. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and get to this. Uh, oh, Butchertown and this single barrel, both running around $60, $65. Not very expensive. Okay. So on the nose, the first thing you notice, it's just caramel, brown sugar. You get the cinnamon, you get the clove. So it's kind of those bourbon qualities that you'd find in a good bourbon. Now, there is, in addition to that cinnamon clove, a little bit of a star anise or star anise, however you want to say. It's fine with me. So a little bit of that hint of like a black licorice. And I'm not a black licorice fan, but when it's done right or it's just a, a complexity and added layer, that's perfectly fine with me. Which is strange because I love, I do love absinthe. So maybe I'm a fan and I don't know it. I know I don't like really like the candies. But anyway, all right. So brown sugar, those cloves, those cinnamon. Uh, you get the red fruit. So you're getting raspberries, red cherries, a little bit of vanilla, so it's kind of combining, again, red rope licorice. But then you also get those dark, those brandy qualities coming through. Uh, you get the, it's like a, a, not really, it's a plum, it's a fig, it's black cherries, it's blackberries, it's a little black currant. Yep, and then you also... You also get a little bit of, on the back end, you get a little bit of like a, a root beer element going on on the nose. You get a little bit of a, 
what is that? It's kind of a, a the, the, the oak is definitely there, but it's not overpowering. It's kind of an earthiness. So I almost think it's like when you're smelling a barrel aged grappa where you're getting, um, when grappa is made from the pomace. So that's the, the stems and the skins that's left over from the winemaking process. You take that and you distill that and you get a little bit of a more of a minerality, a little more, more of an earthiness uh, to that distillate. And you get a little bit of that in here mixed in with that kind of a sarsaparilla, let's say, and, um, and, a, and that oak, okay? All right, so let's get to the taste. It's very, very complex, very nice on the nose. All right. Wow, 120 proof. It's very, very smooth. It's very rich and full flavored, but it's also, it's not really hot. It's not burning the back of my throat or the, my tongue or it's not warming my belly. It's just, it's just right. It's like the perfect balance between full flavor and warmth. It's not hot. Medium high viscosity. Definitely over medium, so it's fairly oily. When it enters, you get that brown sugar, that caramel rush. You get, it's mixed in with those red fruits, those dark fruits. So red rope licorice, a little bit of that hint of that black licorice. The cinnamon clove, again, 50-50 split. So not really hot on the cinnamon, but definitely taste the clove and that uh, licorice. Once you get past that and you start getting into, focusing a little more on the, the plums, a little more on the hint of fig, this twinge of coconut, a little bit of dried coconut in here on the back end. It almost starts to feel like a, with that rich caramel, because that's still, that, that sweet caramel and brown sugar is still running throughout. It almost reminds me of like a Bananas Fosters type element on the back end. But now here we get on the, on the finish, you're starting to get the, that earthiness coming through and that, that root beer that I was getting kind of on the nose is coming through like a sarsaparilla type root. And then you get the black tea element mixing in with the oak. So it's very, very complex. Nobody's out of balance. Nobody's bitter. Nobody's trying. It's an amazing American made brandy. So if you're a big bourbon drinker, and you're thinking about trying a brandy, but maybe you haven't found one that you enjoy, or you've tried the carn uh, cognacs and the armagnacs and they just weren't your thing, you might want to look into this. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be this single barrel bottling from Benny's. Get the Butchertown release. I know Total Wine is a big online retailer. They carry it. Um, try that. And it's just amazing how it's, a, it's kind of that bridge. It, it bridges that gap between br uh, American bourbon and brandy. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.